In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a must-have testing device for DIY mechanics that work on cars, boats, trucks, SUVs, ATVs, motorcycles, or jet skis. This device is also perfect for maintaining off-grid solar inverter systems. What you see here is a 12 volt battery analyzer that has the ability to perform not only a battery test, but a cranking and charging test as well. You can also use the information obtained from this tester to diagnose a faulty starter. This tester is well made, has very high buyer satisfaction ratings, very compact as you can see, it's right in my hand, it's extremely small. And best of all, it's low cost, just over $50. This tester has the ability to perform many of the tests that much more expensive professional devices have the ability to test for. After watching this video, if you're interested in purchasing one of these units, a link has been placed in the video description area, along with a special 15% off coupon code, which I secured for my viewers after speaking with the manufacturer. Okay, let's take a closer look at the unit. Over here, the alligator clips, these are not solid copper. What they are is copper clad. And there's two reasons for that. Number one, to keep the cost of the unit way down. And two, to improve the strength of the alligator clip. Right over here, it may be hard to see, but there is a USB port. And the only purpose to that, because this does not log data that you can connect up to your computer, there is a more expensive model that you can do that with. But I think the purpose of that is in the event that the battery being tested is below 8 volts and this does not power up, you can at least check this unit to make sure it's working properly. So if you plug in the USB cable right here, this will light up. It'll read 0 volts and it will say connect cables. You would have to charge the battery up first before performing the test. Take a look at the back side. Okay. You can choose multiple languages with this unit, English, Russian, Spanish, German, French, or Italian. Okay, let me take this outside and I'm gonna hook it up and show you how it works. Okay, before I show you how to use the tester, I wanna first explain a few things regarding lead acid batteries. If you look at a battery, you're going to see CCA, or in this case, cold cranking amps. 700 is the rating. The battery is supposed to be able to supply a minimum of 700 cranking amps at zero degrees Fahrenheit when it's brand new. And over here, cranking amps at 32 degrees Fahrenheit is 875. You can see that it's higher at the higher temperature. And the reason for that, the internal resistance of a battery goes down as the temperature of the battery increases. A brand new battery has an internal resistance below 5 milliohm, and as a battery ages, the internal resistance will climb. Now, if you live in a cold climate, the battery is going to have the internal resistance climb much slower. That's why batteries last much longer in cooler climates. They can last 5-6 years. And if you live in a hot climate, the internal resistance is going to get higher and higher much quicker and that's why if you live in the southwest United States or Florida typically you'll only get around three years out of a battery. Batteries perform best at around 80 degrees Fahrenheit so if you were to test this at 80 degrees it should be even higher probably closer to 1000 if this was a brand new battery. There are many different testing standards that are used but in the United States we use cold cranking amps and cranking amps. This tester here has the ability to test many other standards. Okay, let's get the testing going on this battery. The battery you see here is around two years and two months old, and I am in South Florida, so this battery probably won't last much longer than 10 months to another year. To connect the tester to the battery is very simple. You're going to take the positive, connect it to the positive, and the negative to the negative. In the event that you connect it backwards, it's not going to make any difference damaging the device, as you can see right here. All right, it does not power up. That's the only thing that's going to happen. So you're going to connect it here, and you're going to connect it there. Let me zoom in so you can see exactly what we're looking at. Right here is the main screen. You can see the voltage being displayed for the battery, 12.84. The vehicle was driven about 20 minutes ago. 
Now what you want to do is an up arrow and down. See it says display R, that's display internal resistance. And this one here is display the rated value, which is going to be off the battery. So we really don't care about showing the displayed value from the battery. We do want to see display R or the internal resistance. Once that's done, you're going to push OK. And you would select the language that you want. You can see all the different choices. Leave it on English. Now we're going to be testing the battery in vehicle, not removed from the vehicle. Hit OK. It says before charge or after. You can push either arrow to get there. This is after charging it. Regular flooded, that's what this is. Lead acid battery with plates with the liquid inside. And there's different choices. See them all right here. Hit OK. Now I'm going to select the cranking amps as I just showed you right over here. It's 875. Before I show you that, let me show you the different standards they have. They're all listed right here. All right, so let's go back to CA, cranking amps, OK. It's set for 875, then you push OK. Now you're testing the battery. OK, so here it says state of charge is right around 98%, 12.84 volts. Internal resistance is 5.6. Now, it tells you to replace the battery here, but you have to look at more than one thing. I really would not go by where it says replace, unless you look at things first. 5.6 ohms isn't bad. You also have to take into consideration that the testing was done at 80 degrees. So this number here is actually much higher than it would be if it was tested at 32 degrees. So if we would put this in the refrigerator and let the temperature drop to 32 degrees Fahrenheit and redid this test, you would see that this cranking amp number would probably be 580, 600, which is well below the 875. And that's why it's giving an indication to replace. Now, my car starts up just fine with this. I don't need the high amount of current. So this battery does have more life, especially after seeing only 5.6 milliohms of internal resistance. Now let me go on to the next test here. Okay. Okay, you can see right over here, it says cranking normal, 10.48 volts, time 568 milliseconds, going to test. Now, if this says the battery's good, and it says cranking normal, but your vehicle still has trouble turning over with the starter, or at times it doesn't do anything at all, you can pretty much rule out the battery as being a problem, and you'll know the starter's the issue. What happens with starters as they age, the windings sometimes short out, allowing them to draw more current than normal, and they also don't spin properly, allowing the engine to easily turn over. Okay, let's go on to the next test now. Click OK. Now we're going to do the charging test. Hit OK. Just loaded. Hit OK. Increase rev. Right over here it says charging normal, loaded 1406, non loaded 1428, ripple normal. The ripple comes back and it does not say normal. That's going to indicate a problem with the rectifier diodes on your alternator. What's happening is all the alternating current produced by the alternator is not being converted into direct current. There's more than likely one or more diodes that are faulty, allowing alternating current to pass, and that's why the ripple would show up on this meter. You're looking at an AC Delco battery that's only about a month old. It has a 750 cranking amp rating and you can see right over here it's coming in at 810, 60 higher and you can see 4.86 milliohms of resistance below 5. State of health 100 and there's the voltage 12.54.
And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. A very cool gadget for the money. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider clicking that subscribe button. And if you are a subscriber, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be alerted every time I upload a video to my channel. Thank you very much for watching.